Hello and welcome everyone to our latest presentation on the NIH trial on Remdesivir. This was a preliminary report which was published in NEJM recently. Ever since the COVID-19 pandemic, we are still searching for the specific therapy for that particular disease. So the research question was to evaluate the clinical efficacy and safety of Remdesivir in COVID-19 pneumonia. So what was the design of the study? This was a prospective, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial with 1 is to 1 randomization ratio. The primary outcome measure was time to recovery based on an ordinal scale. On April 27th, the institute decided to end the trial. The sites that were included in the study were United States with 45 centers, UK, Germany, Denmark, Spain, Japan, Greece, and Singapore, with most centers coming from the United States. The comparison groups were Ramdesivir, which was given at 200 mg loading on day 1, then 100 mg maintenance from day 2 to day 10, versus placebo. 1,000 patients were screened and nearly 500 were assigned to each group. There are a lot of protocol violations and exclusions. So what is reported over here is a intention to treat analysis. The primary outcome, which is days to recovery, was significantly less in Ramdesivir group, that is 11 days, while in placebo, it was 15 days. So what was the author's conclusion from this particular study? They concluded that Remdesivir was superior to placebo in shortening the time to recovery in adult hospitalized with COVID-19 and with an evidence of lower respiratory tract infection. The study has some major limitations, which are the primary outcome was initially planned as a difference between the clinical status on day 15, but was changed after commencement of the study due to the longer expected course of recovery in COVID-19 patients. But by that time, 72 patients had already been enrolled in the study. The data and safety monitoring board occurred after completion of the enrollment of 22nd of April and outcome data of 301 patients who had not recovered or completed 29 study days was not available. There were no matched placebo in, used in the European study sites. In a study in which the primary endpoint is based on clinician's decision, this may be of relevance. The oxygen therapy, which was the main group in which we found benefit, was not standardized. So we don't know whether the oxygen therapy was given same in all the centers. At the time of randomization, 28% of the patients in the control group were in ECMO, while only 23 were in the intervention group. Though renal failure was an exclusion, we don't know what is the definition of renal failure used. No lab data have been said, and baseline ordinal scores are missing in 42 patients. So does this study change my practice? As we can see, the most of the benefit is seen in patients who are receiving only oxygen. But in the group where patients were receiving mechanical ventilation or ECMO, we do not find much benefit. So if you are walking in a critical care unit, you are unlikely to get benefit if you are initiating this therapy in a patient on mechanical ventilation or who is on ECMO. So considering the methodological flaws, if we still take these results and their face value, it is useful only in patients who are on oxygen. And considering that oxygen isn't that expensive, just four days of earlier recovery may have to be weighed against the cost effectiveness of Remsedivir in providing the benefit. Thank you for your patience and check our website for further information.